The Mount Auburn has an incredible legacy in our community. From our early beginnings when Emily Parsons, a Civil War nurse, rallied the people of Cambridge to contribute to her vision of a hospital in Cambridge on the banks of the Charles River. For more than 150 years, that history has guided us. Today, Ms. Parsons' legacy continues with award-winning care, state-of-the-art technology, and always a commitment to compassion with excellence. The special relationships within the hospital, among the physicians, among the administration, among the nursing staff, among all the technology staff, we work collaboratively across lines of administrative control, clinical control, and we work shoulder to shoulder as equals. At Mount Auburn, we developed really tight relationships with what felt like the entire community, from the nurses to the physician's assistants to the actual doctors. We didn't plan it this way, let's start with that. Erica had made it through her first trimester and was getting her prenatal care here um, at Mount Auburn, and then I came for um, my 13-week ultrasound, and I got bad news. The very first time that I met Dr. Wong, our OB, was right after I got devastating news. He took me into a room, and he held our hands, and he let us cry, and work through that. Just honestly would not have happened anywhere else. I just don't believe that would have happened anywhere else, and it was something that I won't forget. The really wonderful thing was that Erica's pregnancy continued, yeah, and we ended up with this munchkin. It was nice too, because along the way of my, uh, during my pregnancy, every time we would come in together, Dr. Wong would always check in on both of us. <laughs> so happily, near the end of Erica's pregnancy, I found out I was pregnant again, and that it was twins, to our great surprise. I had all of my prenatal care at Mount Auburn. When I got through a successful 13 month ultrasound, um, Dr. Young was there, and we spent like a solid year coming to the Women's Center, <laughs> coming to Mount Auburn, um, and seeing the same people who became um, incredible caretakers of her entire family. Mount Auburn first established an affiliation with the Harvard Medical School in 1904 and ultimately developed the teaching hospital concept, with the hospital serving as a model for the nation. So I chose Mount Auburn for my residency because I realized throughout my years in medical school, I became really interested in primary care. I really love the aspect of getting to really know my patients, establishing that rapport with our patients, establishing that continuity of care with our patients, and most importantly, being my patient's advocate to help them navigate the healthcare system. When someone had heart valvular disease, the only way to deal with that, and for decades, was with open heart surgery, which was a very tried and true procedure, but it's a major operation. Now, within just the past few years, we've been able to replace heart valves using catheter techniques where it's just a very small incision in the leg, and the patients often go home the following day. But it's been fantastic because there was an entire population of patients who just couldn't have their valves fixed at all. Even better, we can offer it here at Mount Auburn. Well, I arrived at Mount Auburn Hospital in uh, not so good shape, not so good a shape. I was uh, pretty close to death the early morning of April 19th, 2013. And because I was brought here is probably the reason why I'm still alive today. In really the time of my greatest need, uh, Mount Auburn Hospital was here for me. Uh, my, my first son would have uh, grown up probably not having a father had I not been brought to Mount Auburn Hospital. Mount Auburn Hospital was here again for my family when uh, my wife delivered my second son, Connor. What I think makes Mount Auburn special is its great teamwork around taking care of our patients. There's a sense of community within the hospital that allows us to give patients seamless care. As the front door of the hospital, two-thirds of our patients that get admitted to the hospital come through the emergency department. Because our location borders colleges as well as urban centers and surrounding suburbs, our community's needs are diverse and shifting. We are constantly confronted with new challenges in the emergency department, including an opiate epidemic, as well as mental health issues being on the rise and an aging population in our surrounding community. So we've shifted the way that we address some of these issues in the emergency department, such as having dedicated experts in the field of substance abuse as well as mental health issues, as well as having people uniquely qualified to take care of triaging of elderly patients. Nobody expects to have to come to the ED, so if, if you're meeting me, typically your day isn't going as planned. And 
Um, I try to keep in mind that uh, the ED to people who haven't been there is a scary place and a scary experience. So being a nurse in the ED gives me the opportunity to, to help and guide somebody through um, to them what probably is a very frightening experience and make sure that it, it goes smoothly and that they have a positive outcome. As a patient and a neighbor, a community hospital that gives great service and caring service is incredibly important. When I had a massive cardiac event, I think is what the euphemism is, and I flatlined. They brought me here after a lot of energy to get my heart going again. They put me on ice for nine days and uh, said, that's to save your brain. It made a huge difference in my life in that I have one. And then recently, for the last 11 years, I've been uh, dealing with continuing care. And that enables me to, in fact, have confidence, but also great convenience. Just like Emily Parson, who taught us about values for patient care excellence, clinical care, and, and educating other nurses, we find that today those traditions continue. And in fact, they haven't abated a bit. Our commitment to clinical care and to passionate care and to being uh, good teachers has continued with us since those 1880s. But thank you to our community and everyone who makes that community partnership so strong and so important. And we hope that that'll continue to be strong well into the future. Thank you.